from Batsuno. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm honored to be here. Um, okay, my story starts in the 90s in, um, in UB. Um, if you arrived in Mongolia in the early 90s, it was very different to now. There was, um, there was a new hope of a new freedom, but there was also um, a lot of people ended up with not very much coming out of communism. A lot of families um, didn't have security. They, weren't able, they suddenly had to pay to go to kindergarten, to send their children to kindergartens. Um, medical care was scarce, so it was a difficult time for Mongolians and how to get food. Um, there were shortages in many things, and a, a lot of the institutions which the government had been running during the communist time, they were closing. There wasn't enough money to run all these, so um, a lot of children ended up in difficult situations. Um, I actually came as a yoga meditation teacher. Um, I didn't know much about Mongolia. I knew of uh, I knew it was cold, which I wasn't so happy about, and um, the name of Genghis Khan, who was, I knew as Genghis Khan, and that was all I knew about the place. Um, I did end up living in one of these um, kindergartens, which were quite empty at the time. And in the time, when I was there, I would notice some children playing in the playground, but I realized they didn't go home. Um, they slept, they were sleeping there. Um, some of them, I realized they, some had parents, but they were drinking vodka in, nearby in the streets, so the kids would stay nearby hoping to get some support from their families. Um, and some, their families had been broken, um, separated, or they'd moved into countryside and didn't have much security. Um, so a lot of children were, you know, I, in, in difficult situations with this big, big change. So, um, and the government also was not able to support in many ways in those time. Um, so those children, they had to fend for themselves in, um, you know, minus 20, 30, 40 degrees. Um, so um, some of the children at that time, they did live down where the heating systems under the ground, you will see that. But they made a home, and it was amazing how happy these children were. And um, when I was living in the kindergarten, some of those kids, they asked, could, I, could they have some water? And then it was matches. So I gave them those things. And um, I, those days, I used to go running, like, 6 in the morning. And fortunately, I don't do it these days. But um, some of those kids would... Um, get up and come running with me. And so I realized it wasn't that they just needed, that they just wanted some food or um, food or some, some help in that way, but they, they enjoyed having some company and, and, you know, and to have fun also. We also had some fun. So that was really how I started to get close to those children. And I love to hear their stories of... Um, you know, how they had to steal the sausages in the market and they would go underneath the table and pull it down and, and they would feed themselves these ways. But it was harder to hear the stories of the, of the girls, how what would happen in the night, some men would come and kind of um, take them or give them things and they ended up getting into sex work. And some of that was really in an innocent way, you know, just to get food. And, you know, even one of the... The girls, you know, I said, well, you know, she said, oh, I have 19 boyfriends and they love me. I said, well, you know, it's difficult, you know, you could become pregnant. And she's saying, well, that's impossible because babies are really big and I'm very small and the baby couldn't fit inside of me. So, um, you know, that couldn't happen to me. So it was, it was very hard to see their, their situation. So um, I thought, well, okay, um, maybe could do more. I was sleeping inside, they were sleeping outside. So anyway, somehow from this, I started um, to get a, got a place in one of the gear districts in, in um, Mongolia where we were able to get a hashobashing, which is just a fence and a house, a small house, a family house, and um, some children came to live with me. I thought, okay, maybe 10 kids could fit in this house, but we went up to almost 40 children in, those house, in that house, and um, many small, actually, uh, 
as things were difficult in those times, there was quite a lot of abandonment to small babies, so we ended up with many babies. So um, with, with the help of some Mongolian young people who had been my yoga students, they said, look, Didi, I will help you to, um, to help these kids. First, a lot of them, because I think this was a little bit hidden in the times when the institutions were there, you didn't see the children in the streets. So first, people found it hard to accept we had street kids in Mongolia, and there was some prejudice that they were dirty and they would steal. But some young people, they started to help me, and um, we, we made a family, you know, we, we lived in that gear district, the kids carried water, we cooked and cleaned, and um, we fought a lot with scabies and lice and health problems. Um, but over the years, that's become better, also for the children to be accepted. In the first years, um, they weren't really accepted in the schools, and um, people thought we were crazy, and, you know, why would you live with all these children? But I, I've found that the acceptance has become more, and, um, and also more um, Mongolians being involved in helping this family to grow, because, um, you know, in the first years, I would save a little bit of money to go out of the country, you know, to be able to catch a train to go somewhere to try and get some money and come back. But now, with, with the changes in Mongolia, there's more wealth, and people have opened, opened themselves and their minds and have started to, to come to, to Lotus and help to give food um, and also some acceptance in different educational institutions. Um, so Lotus has had many children pass through Lotus and it's been their home. We've had a few hundred children. At the moment, we're about 90, 90 children. Um, uh, that's how we used to travel those days was no cars so we everybody went in the back of trucks i think most mongolians remember those days um but um we we, we um we do run a kin i do run a kindergarten and a primary school and i'd like to make that much better quality primary school because as you know good education really helps the children to get a place in the society to be more accepted um lotus now it's um, gone through, we, we now run a small company also where some of the original children uh, are now one of the original girls in Lotus, she's now the manager of the Blooming Lotus, which is our, we run a guest house and um, also we're working on a bakery. And so now some of those children are starting to take leaderships within, within Lotus. Um, Actually, the, the manager of our guest house just had her first child yesterday. So Lotus is also growing, that we are getting many, um, yes, I'm getting many grandchildren, and, you know, it's, it's a growing place. And, um, but I, I will say that now there's less abandonment, the situation is getting better in Mongolia, um, but um, there, there's still special, special needs children. There's still a lot more, which I hope that... Um, as a small country which, which is developing in so many ways could, could work with these, these, these children and um, help, you know, just help in different ways because I think it's just of opening your heart a bit more and you'll see it's, it's really been, there's been some wonderful um, children who have passed through, through Lotus in all these years. Um, and. I really hope that, like any mother, that they will have a great future. So we're just looking at different ways um, to improve education. We hope that we can support ourselves more. Um, the children working, um, a number of them do work in the guest house. We have five of them working there. And we also help to, we're doing more and more small businesses, which the children can be involved in, our special needs children, and giving them a place and that they feel proud to to be children of Mongolia and to be part of the Lotus family. So, thank you.